Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel that is Mechanical Engineering. Today in this video I am going to discuss the very important topic, the very important welding related topic that is gas tungsten arc welding process. Uh, so in this video I am going to discuss the entire process of uh, gas tungsten arc welding process, then the electrodes used in this process, the shielding gas, its advantages and disadvantages. So let's begin the video. So now we will discuss the process of gas tungsten arc welding. Okay, so gas tungsten arc welding is a process that melts and joins the metal by heating them with an arc established between a non-consumable tungsten electrode and the metal. So basically in this process a non-consumable tungsten electrode is used and the arc is generated in between the electrode and the workpiece. So that is the basic principle we have to generate the arc in between the non-consumable electrode and the workpiece as the arc is generated the heat get developed and because of generation of heat the the metal which we want to join that gets melted and then that get fused together the torch holding the tungsten electrode is connected to a shielding gas cylinder as well as one terminal of the power source. So basically the power source has two terminal. So one terminal is connected to the electrode and that electrode has the facility of shielding gas also. Why you are using here shielding gas? Because uh, we have to protect the weld metal from the environment. So, and hence we are using shielding gas here. The tungsten electrode is usually in contact with the water-cooled copper tube called the contact tubes which is connected to the welding, welding cable from the terminal. So here as we are using a non-consumable tungsten electrode, so very much heat is generated and that needs to be cooled and hence we can use a water-cooled uh, copper tubes here which is also known as a contact tube. So with this diagrams I can explain the entire process. So the very first diagram here uh, you can see the gas tungsten arc welding process. So here you can see a gas supply. So this is nothing but a gas cylinder where you can store the inert gas like argon, helium or even you can use a non-inert gas like uh, carbon dioxide also. This is the welding power source. So this power source has two terminal. This is first terminal and this has this is another terminal. So one terminal has to be connected with the electrode holder and another terminal has to be connected with the workpiece. Okay. So now the electrode holder consists of an electrode. This is nothing but the tungsten electrode. So the electrode holder consists of a tungsten electrode and at the same time it is connected with the gas supply. Okay. Then this is nothing but the workpiece which is to be joined together. Now the arc is generated in between the non-consumable tungsten electrode and the workpiece. Why it is non-consumable? Because it is not going to consume during the welding process. If you consider the MIG welding process that is metal inert gas welding process. So in that process the, weld, the electrode is consumed during the welding process but here electrode is not consumed. And hence we, we have to use uh, the filler metal when we want to join a thicker plate in that case we have to use a filler material also because here you are using a non-consumable electrode. Okay. So uh, this is also a diagram for a gas tungsten arc welding. So this is nothing but the welding torch right this welding torch consists of a tungsten electrode this is nothing but the tungsten electrode which is shown gray in color and this is the contact tube for the supply of water and this is nothing but the shielding gas which is shown in pink color okay and this is nothing but the nozzle so with the nozzle it is directed towards the weld pool so as to protect the weld pool from the environment Okay, so these are the contact tubes and uh, uh, the electrode is connected to the power source and at the same time the shielding gas is also provided through the torch. And this is the filler, filler rod. As here you are using a non-consumable electrode, so filler rod has to be used during the process. Now this is a torch. Okay, so... Uh, from this point the water comes in this is the passage for the water so water comes in and then water goes out okay 
then this is the passage for the shielding gas so the shielding gas comes in from this point and uh, it is directed to the weld field this is nothing but the collet which is shown blue in color so the collet is nothing but uh, a member for holding the electrode and uh, this is a nozzle so with the nozzle the shielding gas is directed towards the weld pool okay now the workpiece is connected to other terminal of the power source through the different cable now this is the power source right the power source has two terminal positive and negative so one terminal is connected to the electrode holder and another terminal is connected to the workpiece the shielding gas goes through the torch body and is directed by a nozzle towards the weld pool to protect it from the air so here you can see the shielding gas which is shown pink in color so it is directed towards the weld pool this is nothing but the weld pool or the weld bead and the shielding gas is directed towards the weld pool with the help of a nozzle so this is nothing but a nozzle the nozzle directed the nozzle directed the the shielding gas towards the weld pool protection from the air is much better in gas tungsten arc welding than in shielded metal arc welding because an inert gas such as argon or helium is usually used as a shielding gas and because the shielding gas is directed towards the weld pool now uh, there is one more type that is shielding metal arc welding process okay so in shielded metal arc welding process the electrode is used uh, a consumable type of electrode is used and it is coated with the flux and that flux disintegrates during the welding process and that provides the shielding environment but that is not enough so here the argon gas is enough to protect the weld from the environment so hence the protection from the air is much better in gas tungsten arc welding as here you are using inert gas like argon or the helium for this reason gas tungsten arc welding is also called as tungsten inert gas welding so as here you are using inert gas so gas tungsten arc welding is also known as tungsten inert gas welding However, in special occasion, a non-inert gas can also be added in small quantity to the shielding gas. Sometimes we can use a carbon dioxide gas as a shielding gas. So in that case, a gas tungsten arc welding seems to be a more appropriate name for this welding process. When a filler rod is needed, for instance, for joining a thicker metal, it can be fed either manually or automatically into the arc. So here you can see the filler rod. This is nothing but the filler rod. Whenever we we want to join a thicker plate, in that case we have to use a filler rod. So we can supply the filler rod either manually or automatically. So this is nothing but the entire process for the gas tungsten arc welding. Now we, we will discuss the polarity. Polarity means the connections that we have to made during the welding so uh, as the welding source has two terminal uh, the two terminals are positive and negative okay so you can connect the electrode either to the positive terminal or the negative terminal likewise you can connect the workpiece either to the positive or the negative terminal and depending on the connection we are getting two types of polarity and that polarity is direct current electrode negative and direct current electrode positive so for working the uh, the welding machine we can use a DC current and the AC current if you are using a DC current in that case we will be getting two types of polarity that is direct current electrode negative and direct color direct current electrode positive so now we will discuss direct current electrode negative this also called as straight polarity so direct current electrode negative is also known as a straight polarity and which is most common polarity in gas tungsten arc welding the electrode is connected to the negative terminal of the power source so in dcen the electrode is connected to the negative terminal as the electrode is connected to the negative terminal the electrons are emitted from the tungsten electrode and accelerated while traveling through the arc when the electron enters the workpiece an amount of energy equivalent to the work function is released this is why in gas tungsten arc welding with 
direct current electrode negative more power about two third is located at the work end of the arc and less about one third at the electrode end consequently a relatively narrow and deep weld is produced okay so now we will discuss it it in detail so this is nothing but direct current electrode negative now this is your power source it has two terminal negative and positive here the negative terminal is connected with the electrode the positive terminal is connected with the workpiece okay so as the electrode is connected with the negative terminal the electron always starts from negative to positive so the electrons are emitted from the electrode and it starts moving to the workpiece so uh, the arc is generated from the electrode towards the workpiece the electron will collide over the surface of the workpiece so more heat is generated at the surface of the workpiece about two third heat is generated at the surface of the workpiece whereas one third heat is generated at the electrode in direct current electrode negative so here you can see this is nothing but direct current electrode negative this is the workpiece this is the workpiece and this is the electrode so electron starts moving from the workpiece to uh, from the electrode towards the workpiece so more heat that is two third heat is generated at the workpiece and one third heat is generated at the electrode and hence we are getting a shallow sorry hence we are getting a deep <coughs> deep uh, weld okay so hence we are getting a narrow and deep weld at the workpiece so here you can see sorry narrow and deep weld this is a narrow and deep weld at the workpiece with direct current electrode negative which is also known as straight polarity now we will discuss direct current electrode negative polarity sorry negative we have discussed now we will discuss direct current electrode positive this is a reverse polarity the electrode is connected to the positive terminal of the power source the heating effect of the electrons is now at the tungsten electrode rather than at the workpiece consequently a shallow weld is produced the positive ions of the shielding has bombarded the workpiece knocking off oxide films and produce the clean weld surface therefore direct current electrode positive can be used for welding thin sheets of a strong oxide forming material such as aluminium magnesium where deep penetration is not required okay so now we will discuss in detail this is nothing but direct current electrode positive so your power source has two terminal negative and positive now the electrode is connected to the positive terminal and the workpiece is connected with negative terminal so as the the workpiece is connected with negative terminal the electron starts moving from the workpiece towards the electrode so more heat is generated at the electrode and less is generated at the workpiece so whenever you want to produce a material with less thickness in that case direct current electrode positive polarity is used because less heat is generated at the workpiece again we are getting a cleaning action in case of direct current electrode positive so here you can see the one third heat is generated at the workpiece whereas two third heat is generated at the electrode here one third heat is generated at the electrode and two third heat is generated at the workpiece so this is the difference in between direct current electrode negative that is straight polarity and direct current electrode positive that is reverse polarity now next type that is ac current so with ac current as it is the alternating current we are getting half of the heat at the electrode and half of the heat at the workpiece and at the same time we are getting cleaning action also so this is all about your polarity now the electrodes so here in this process a non consumable tungsten electrode is used and it is coated with different color like yellow red here you can see the electrode is coated with uh, the green yellow red okay so uh, either you can use a pure tungsten electrode or you can use uh, the tungsten electrode with 2% cerium or thorium which is having better electron emissivity and current current carrying capacity and resistance to the contamination that pure tungsten electrode do not have okay so the the tungsten electrode will have 2% of thorium because because it has a 2% of thorium it we will get a better electron emissivity and as a result of it 
as a result of it arc starting is easier and arc is more stable the electron emissivity refers to the ability of the electron tip to emit the electron that is nothing but electron emissivity a lower electron emissivity implies a higher electron tip temperature required to emit the electron and hence greater risk of melting the tip if uh, the more temperature is there at the tip of uh, electrode in that case there may be a chances of melting the electron tip uh, electrode tip okay so that is all about the electrodes use in gtaw now the shielding gas so here we can use the inert gas as a shielding gas so both uh, argon and helium can be used as a shielding gas but argon having certain advantages over helium okay since it is easier to ionize the argon than helium arc initiation is easier and the voltage drop across the arc is lower with the argon also since the argon is heavier than helium it offers more effective shielding and greater resistance to the cross draft than helium then with direct current electrode positive or ac argon also has a greater oxide cleaning action than helium these advantages plus the lower cost of argon make it more attractive for gtaw than helium so most of the time argon gas is used as a shielding gas in case of tungsten inert gas welding now the advantages of tig gas tungsten arc welding is suitable for joining thin section because of its limited heat input so it is mostly suitable for joining the thin sections it can also be used to weld bud joints of a thin sheet by fusion alone that is without addition of filler metal or autogenous welding okay whenever you you want to join a thin section in that case there is no need to use the filler metal and whenever we are not using the filler metal that type of welding is known as autogenous welding since the gas tungsten arc welding process is very clean welding process it can be used to weld a reactive metal such as titanium zirconium aluminum aluminum and magnesium as there is a cleaning action in gtaw we can use a gtaw welding process for welding a reactive metal like titanium zirconium aluminum and magnesium these metals cannot be melted with the help of shielded metal arc welding process because that is not enough for providing the shielding effect now the disadvantages the deposition rate in gtaw is low as it is uh, mostly it is a manual process uh, manually the filler material filler metal is supplied during the welding process so the deposition rate is very low in case of gtaw then excessive welding current can cause melting of tungsten electrode and results in brittle tungsten inclusion in the weld metal okay so whenever excessive welding current is used in that case as we are using a non consumable electrode it get heat up and tip of the electrode gets melt and that results in brittle tungsten inclusion in the weld metal so that fall inside the weld metal so it leads to brittle tungsten inclusion however by using preheated filler metal the deposition rate can be improved so this is all about your tungsten inert gas welding or the more appropriate name is gas tungsten arc welding thank you so much for watching my video thank you